The duel between Aaron Sawyer and Quinn Hoover reached a critical juncture atop a majestic plateau, the epicenter of their clash. The sun shone brightly, casting an ethereal glow on the battlefield below. The air crackled with anticipation as both competitors prepared to demonstrate their prowess in the realm of high fantasy. Aaron Sawyer, a seasoned warrior with a deck known as Legendary Infection, stood firmly at one end of the plateau. His hand was carefully chosen, showcasing his strategic acumen. He possessed three lands, their verdant beauty mirroring the natural surroundings. A mox, a symbol of untapped power, glimmered in his grip. Alongside it, an ash nod, a nimble and elusive creature, represented his early game offensive. Completing his hand was an immortal sun, a relic of immense knowledge and card-drawing abilities. Opposite Aaron, Quinn Hoover, also a formidable contender, commanded the Soren Syndicate deck. An anthem effect reverberated through the air as Quinn's creatures, endowed with newfound strength, rose valiantly at his command. The sheer force of his presence was palpable, radiating an aura of determination and confidence. His creatures, suffused with power, stood tall, ready to face any challenge that came their way. As the battle commenced, Aaron swiftly cast his Ashnod, a sleek and agile creature, onto the pristine battlefield. With a graceful leap, it melted seamlessly with the terrain, preparing to strike when the opportune moment arose. Quinn, ever watchful, gauged the situation with a discerning eye, assessing his opponent's every move. Quinn's voice of the Blessed, a spiritual entity resonating with divine energy, floated above the ground, invigorated by the anthem effect bestowed upon it. It radiated an otherworldly aura, exuding both beauty and strength. The sheer magnitude of its presence compelled Aaron to reconsider his assault. Yet, a flicker of hesitation crossed Quinn's eyes as he refrained from trading his three-thirds voice of the blessed with Aaron's Ashnod, recognizing the potency of its death touch. Unyielding in his resolve, Quinn summoned the authority of the consuls, an artifact imbued with the power to regulate and govern the battlefield. The authority's resolute form glowed with an aura of command, casting a tranquil spell upon the surroundings. Time seemed to slow as the impact of Quinn's play reverberated through the plateau. The battlefield, once a frenzied arena, now embraced a serene atmosphere, the tempo of the duel subtly shifting. Aaron's initial assault was thwarted by Quinn's strategic maneuver, buying the gold-tier competitor valuable time to regroup and fortify his defenses. The plateau, witnessing this clash of wills, held its breath, anticipating the next flurry of action. The first three turns had set the stage for a mesmerizing spectacle that would unfold over the course of at least 12 turns. The fate of these two formidable competitors hung in the balance, as they navigated the intricacies of their decks and executed their strategies with unwavering determination. The high fantasy landscape served as an awe-inspiring backdrop, magnifying the intensity and grandeur of this climactic duel. As the duel atop the towering plateau continued, the winds carried an air of tension and uncertainty. Quinn Hoover, still grappling with a lack of resources, found himself on the back foot as he missed his fourth land drop. Aaron Sawyer, however, displayed his resourcefulness by amassing five mana, each an emblem of his growing power. Undeterred by the setback, Quinn Hoover sought to tip the scales in his favor. With a cunning strategy in mind, he wove an enchantment that unleashed a dreadful plague upon the valiant guardian, Valentine, and the nimble Ashnod. The enchantment twisted the air around them, sending waves of malevolent energy coursing through their beings. Yet, Aaron Sawyer, a master tactician, had a plan of his own. On the fifth turn of their engagement, he unveiled a Phyrexian tower, a dark edifice that rose ominously from the plateau. Its presence seemed to imbue him with a sinister resolve, as if drawing power from the very depths of the land itself. And then, in a display of sheer brilliance, he cast the immortal sun. 
As the immortal sun hung high above the battlefield, its ethereal light cascaded down upon Arun Sawyer. The ancient artifact radiated an aura of dominance, countering the plague that had beset Valentine and Ashnod. Sawyer's hand swelled with knowledge and opportunity, its depths brimming with potential. With each passing turn, the sinister plague unleashed by Quinn Hoover took its toll on the battlefield. The plateau, once a realm teeming with life and vibrant creatures, now bore the scars of a relentless onslaught. Aaron Sawyer's forces dwindled, his cannon fodder decimated by the relentless onslaught of the plague. Desperate to turn the tide, he sees the opportunity on his turn 7. Aaron Sawyer's hand clenched around the dark power of Yogmoth's vile offering. With a chilling incantation, he invoked the spell, targeting the voice of the blessed that had proven to be a thorn in his side. The spirit creature, momentarily suspended in disbelief, was whisked away into the realm of exile, its presence eradicated. As Aaron Sawyer's turn 8 dawned, destiny whispered its secrets to him. His hand, newly replenished, drew forth a fateful card, Crux of Fate. The skies darkened, ominous clouds gathering above the plateau. With a sweeping gesture, Aaron unleashed the cataclysmic power of the spell. A wave of draconic energy surged forth, obliterating all non-dragon entities that dared to defy its wrath. In an instant, the battlefield was cleansed, a blank slate upon which destiny could be rewritten. Quinn Hoover's creatures, once standing tall with their anthem-fueled might, were no more. Only remnants of Aaron's fallen allies remained, casualties of Quinn's relentless plague. But amidst the aftermath, a foreboding presence loomed. A subtle tremor ran through the plateau, signaling the impending arrival of Scytherix, the Blight Dragon. Aaron's last-ditch hope had manifested, a harbinger of doom and decay, poised to wreak havoc upon the plateau and reshape the outcome of the duel. The stage was set for an enthralling continuation of their battle, as the forces of darkness and light clashed atop the high fantasy plateau. The winds whispered secrets, the sun cast its judgment, and the contenders, Aaron Sawyer and Quinn Hoover, stood resolute, their destinies entwined in the heart of the battlefield. The once pristine and awe-inspiring plateau now bore the marks of a fierce confrontation between Aaron Sawyer and Quinn Hoover. The winds howled, carrying with them the weight of the impending battle as the combatants readied themselves for the next stage of their clash. At the forefront of Aaron's forces stood Yogmith, a figure shrouded in darkness and mystery. His presence exuded an air of malevolence, and his eyes glinted with an insidious intelligence. Across from him, Quinn sent his formidable commander, Soren Markov, into the fray. A clash of titans seemed imminent as these two mighty beings squared off. With a powerful surge, Yogmuth lunged at Soren Markov, his strikes swift and deadly. The echoes of their clash reverberated through the plateau, shaking the very foundations of the battlefield. Blood was drawn, staining the ground with evidence of the duel's ferocity. Though weakened, Soren managed to withstand Yogmoth's assault, refusing to yield. The commander remained resolute, his presence an indomitable force on the battlefield. Meanwhile, Aaron Sawyer's forces surged forth, an unstoppable tide that swept across the plateau. Creatures, summoned from the depths of his deck, materialized one by one, taking their places alongside Scytherix, the Blight Dragon. The ominous dragon, a harbinger of doom, cast a foreboding shadow over the battlefield, radiating an aura of pestilence and decay. On the opposing side, Quinn Hoover worked diligently to rebuild his forces. Courtyards were reconstructed, serving as sanctuaries for his vampiric allies. Among them, an angel of you unity, its wings resplendent and majestic, soared above the battlefield, emanating a sense of ethereal power. And there, a spirit creature, bloated with an immense surge of energy, stood on the precipice of invincibility, nearly a counter or two away from reaching its untouchable state. Amidst the impasse, Quinn cast an exquisite blood, 
forging a potent bond between Arryn's life loss and his own life gain. The very essence of the plateau seemed to pulse with this newfound connection, as if the terrain itself reacted to the intricacies of the duel. The scales of fate hung precariously, teetering on the edge of triumph or defeat. Quinn Hoover, ever vigilant, scoured the battlefield for a modular piece, a missing element that could tip the scales definitively in his favor. He sensed that victory was within his grasp, and Aaron Sawyer's demise was just a jolt of damage away. The plateau held its breath, its atmosphere charged with anticipation, as the competitors prepared to make their next moves. The battlefield, a stage set for this grand spectacle, bore the scars of the intense conflict that unfolded atop the plateau. A convergence of darkness and light, of strategic prowess and divine power, played out in a symphony of spells and creatures. Each turn, each decision, held the power to shape the outcome of this high fantasy duel, leaving a lasting mark on the annals of their battle. Atop the windswept plateau, the final act of the duel between Aaron Sawyer and Quinn Hoover was set to unfold. The atmosphere crackled with intensity as the combatants prepared for their decisive moves. With a surge of determination, Quinn launched a relentless assault, his forces striking Aaron with relentless fury. Blow after blow, his attacks pierced through defenses, dealing more than half of the damage required for victory. The plateau trembled under the weight of the onslaught, as if acknowledging the impending climax. Undeterred by the imminent threat, Aaron Sawyer summoned the very essence of darkness once again. As his turn arrived, he channeled his remaining mana into the casting of the second crux of fate. The skies darkened, storm clouds swirling ominously overhead. A wave of draconic energy surged forth, obliterating all creatures on the battlefield save for one. Scytherix, the Blight Dragon, emerged from the shadows, its scales gleaming with a sickly sheen. Standing tall as the sole survivor, it loomed high above the plateau, its presence commanding an ominous. The immortal sun cast its radiant silhouette, bestowing an ethereal glow upon the battle-worn terrain. But Aaron Sawyer's forces were not limited to the Blight Dragon alone. From the depths of dreams, Lurus of the Dream Den appeared, beckoning Valentine and Ashnod back into the fray. These resolute allies returned, their determination unwavering even in the face of overwhelming odds. Quinn Hoover, a shrewd strategist, recognized the futility of his situation. He understood that victory had slipped through his fingers, and the path to triumph was now closed. With a sense of grace, he bowed out of the duel, acknowledging the undeniable prowess of his opponent. The battlefield, witness to the grand clash of sorcery and creatures, seemed to hold its breath as the outcome became clear. The echoes of the fierce battle reverberated through the plateau, leaving an indelible mark on its hallowed ground. The dueling forces had tested their mettle, their skills honed in the crucible of combat. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows upon the plateau, a solemn silence settled upon the scene. Aaron Sawyer emerged victorious, standing tall amidst the remnants of the battlefield. The high fantasy duel had reached its conclusion, leaving a tale of valor and strategy etched into the annals of legend.